Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jarvis. Today we will be doing JA Challenge Volume 2, Psychosis, the Secondary Stage, the Part 3 video. The secondary stage of psychosis has no definite period of commencement. It may occur as early as 90 days after infection. So Dr. JH Allen says that the secondary stage of psychosis, it generally occurs early within 90 days after infection. Again, it may not appear as a secondary disease sooner than one or two years, or it may also take one or two years. So it varies from 90 days to one or two years. The constitution of the patient, his or her habits, and the treatment will modify this feature very much. So, so it will all depend upon the constitution of the patient, whether it's a robust constitution, a feeble constitution, the habits, what sort of treatment has been taken, etc. That will modify the nature of the disease. So the secondary stage of psychosis can be seen from 90 days to one or two years. The case example has been given age 8, 38 to 39, wherein the secondary stage of psychosis present itself in a subacute gouty form of rheumatism. So you can just go through this page 38 and 39, whereby he has described in detail a case about a case of secondary stage of psychosis in which subacute form of rheumatism is there. So according to symptom similarity, better random was prescribed and the old symptoms resurface. So it's very important. The old symptom has to resurface, then only the cure will take place. Then Dr. J. H. Allen said it was followed by bryonia, which caught the which cured the patient. Almost every disease in the secondary stage psychosis is of an inflammatory nature. Just like in the primary stage, also there's inflammation. In the secondary stage, also there is inflammation, but more internal organs are, are affected. These inflammatory changes may be either acute, subacute, or chronic. The degree of severity varies from mild wandering rheumatic pains of the muscles to that of severe specific acute urethritis. So the severity varies from a mild wandering pain to the uh, acute urethritis, arthritis. A type of psychotic inflammations are seen in the pelvic disease of the women. So the psychotic inflammations are very much characteristic or seen in the pelvic disease of the women. The organs are involved, the organs which are involved are hydrosalpingitis, cystosalpingitis, biosalpingitis, and abscess of the tubes are not, are not at all uncommon. So all these organs have been, uh, in, are being involved with inflammation. Therefore, the word itis is there at the end of everything. Cystic degeneration of the ovaries, cervix, and uterus are some of the more severe changes due to this inflammatory condition. So the inflammatory condition will later on go into the cystic de de degeneration of different parts of the ovary, cervix, and uterus, which are more severe changes. We may also have peritonitis, cellulitis, pericystitis, cystitis, metritis, perimetritis, or inflammation of the endometrium. The mucous membranes have a mottled or spotted appearance. So now the mucous membranes will have a mottled or spotted appearance. In other words, they appear patchy or blotchy, one part of the tissue being of a darker reddish color and, and, and another part of the natural color. So the mucous membranes will be mottled or spotted in appearance. They will be dark reddish color. One part will be dark reddish color, well as the other part will be of a natural color. These dark venous congested spots are often covered with thin virulent secretion, having an offensive odor. Occasionally, they are sensitive to touch. So whatever, whatever changes are taken place, that is the dark venous congestion spots, they are covered with a thin virulent secretion or a thin virulent discharge, which are sensitive to touch. The discharges are common to the psychotic inflammation in other parts, dirty colored and offensive. The odor alone is frequently diagnostic of the disease. Again, he reminds you, Dr. Allen reminds you that the odor is pungent, pusty, or a dead fish-like odor or a fish brine-like odor. They are subject to erythemas and chafing of the skin, which pours out their peculiar offensive psychotic discharge. Also, on the skin, you will get er erythema and you will get chafing of the skin where there is inflammation. Chafing takes place because of constant uh, pressure or constant rubbing of the part of the skin of the skin constantly, and each has its own peculiar offensive psychotic discharge, that is a pungent, musty, or a dead fish, or a fish friend like odor. Especially is true in the fleshy patients. So it will be true in patients who are obese. 
the affected surface is bluish red and the pus and the pus is dirty brownish yellow or yellowish green it excretes the, the unaffected parts as it passes over them so whatever discharges are there they accrete and whatever and, and whatever they pass over the unaffected parts or the parts which are normal they also become affected this symptom is quite constant one in young babies and is present soon after birth the urine and feces excrete due to their acidity so all the or the acidity so all the discharges in the psychotic mechanism also acidic even the urine even the feces they will excrete the part over which it flows often the whole perineum is found inflamed hot very sore and painful due to the urine and the child will scream after urination so the whole perineum is involved because of the urine which 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 flows over it and the child will scream after urination thus on examining any mucus surface where the psychotic catarrh condition exists we have to look for the mortal condition of the tissue so it rajesh all reminds us that you have to see the mortal condition of the tissue and also for oozing from this dark venous congested spot so two important points mortal uh, mortal condition and the and the discharge it will once be seen that the mucus membranes have lost a normal pink hue so characteristic to this tissue so when the mortal condition of the mucus membrane sets inside they have lost the normal pinkish hue of a normal pinkish color when the system is tainted with psychosis it may assume a more malignant character such as secondary pelvic processes like pelvic and peritoneal adhesions pelvic and peritoneal abscesses and mucus cysts attach anywhere to the external uterine walls so when the system has a strong miasmatic load of the psychotic miasm it may it may maintain or it may assume a more malignant character more malignant meaning what malignant meaning more disease uh, process formation such as pelvic and peritoneal adhesions pelvic and peritoneal abscesses and mucus cysts attach anywhere to the external uterine walls now many case examples are given from page 42 to 47 which you can read from the ga challenge volume 2 under this chapter great danger lies in any local interference with the discharge of the psychotic patients that means if the psychotic discharge is there and if it, and if if any local medicament has been given which suppresses it then the then there will be a great danger as the rule no stasis will take place until it is interfered with so as a rule that stasis will not take place until it is interfered with some sort of an medication there are so many ways by which it can be suppressed by medicated douches or by the local application of crude drugs such as hypestasis boric acid nitrate of silver zinc sulfate or other suppressive medicate so the discharge of the psychotic miasm um, if suppression takes place stasis will take place and the stasis can be attained by suppression by various treatments such as medicated douches or the local application of drugs etc it is more seen in pelvic in female pelvic wall as compared to the male so this sort of an inflammation is more seen in the females with the pelvic inflammatory diseases of the females as compared to the males in males it doesn't produce such disastrous effects of prolonged or intense suffering whereas in males the suffering is much is much bit less in the males we see many cases of orchitis and epidermitis and cystic troubles but in the males you will see the cases of orchitis epidermitis and also cystic troubles even an infinite number of cases of psychotic arthritis and subacute forms of gout rheumatism and gouty states of the system will be seen it may produce even more profound impression or more dangerous complications such as mania true insanity heart lesion stomach difficulties gastrointestinal disease pneumonia and other inflammatory processes so the more dangerous complications could be of mania heart lesion stomach lesion git diseases pneumonia and other inflammatory processes combination of unskilled homeopathy often induces a more profound suppression and more dangerous complication than the treatment of the regular or the old school so dr gh alam reminds us that more harm can be done by a homeopathic doctor if he is not very skillful so unskillful homeopathic treatment will cause more suppression as compared to the treatment of the regular or the old school where even they cause suppression so homeopathic suppression is still worse than the allopathic suppression 
So that's all for this part. Please be stay tuned for more. Part four will be coming up soon. If you are new to the channel, kindly do subscribe. And if you like my video, kindly give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much.